And the, the, the miracles, put it this way, I'm going to call it miracles. A lot of the things that the father was able to do, the Egyptians were able to do the same things. So um, don't take for granted that when, you know, I'm sure nobody goes to palm readers and things of that, that sort. But people can't put hexes in, 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 in booms and in chant. They can do it. It, it can it, it can happen. My grandma used to have a thing where um, she refused. She refused. My grandfather could not eat at another woman's house and she didn't know her. Could not. Because my grandmother, she swore up and down. And um, it was always the same. If a woman could fill a man's belly, you know, forget about it. He ain't coming back home. And so, um, again, my grandmother, she was always into that, that whole thing there. Um, be, she, women knew that it was not a good thing for a man to eat at a, at a, at a, from a lot of different hands. Because they could put things into the food and things like that. And next thing you know, your husband's not coming back home again. This is just some of the old wise tellings that my grandmother used to tell me. Take it for what it's worth. Read on. And at that time, when they brought when they brought down to it, it speaks for them in all matters that they ask of it mm -hmm. through the power of the name which is written in it. And some make them in the figures of men of gold and silver, and go to them at times known to them. And the figures re receive the influence of the stars and tell them future things. Mm. And in this manner were the images which break or pale stole from her father. Okay, so what did this remind you of? We have a decapitated head. It's anointed in oil. Um, and the head lights up. Jack o' lanterns. Remember the old story about the headless horseman? Mm -hmm. And he's going to look for his head? Yeah. So these things have an, um, a root. Even though people would say, well, listen, you know what? That's not what Halloween means to me. That's not what it means to me. But when you try to show people there's an um, a origin of these things, they're not trying to hear that. Not trying to hear that at all. So we just ask people to be very, 15, okay, be very, very careful about what you're doing. Because again, there's an origin to these things, um, jack-o'-lanterns, the headless horsemen, mm -hmm. all these things here. So just be um, kind of careful. These, um, so it was able now to tell the future. Um, I find it interesting when you read all like some other history behind it. They said that the reason why Rachel actually took this, um, this teraphine because Levan always talked to it because he always wanted to know what would happen later on in, in the future. And being that um, Jacob was about, you know, he, they're gone. She didn't want her father now to inquire to this head because it would tell um, her father where they were going. So she actually did this in protection, some were saying. Um, so I said, well, you know, take it away, man. I don't know about all of that. You know, she could have just destroyed it, you know. But again, I just found that real interesting. So they was able now, this thing was able to talk. Um, and it's almost, um, it's, that's, you know, it's not chanting. Um, there's another word um, that I'm looking for. Um, it's not, uh, what's that um, chance, chanting? That's what it said about 44, though. Summoning? Yeah, it's like a summoning. Um, it, it'll come back to this. Um, yeah, there's, there's necromancy, there's pronostication, there's um, there's witch witchcraft, all these things here. Um, but there's a chant. This is, but it's another, another word that's being used for um, for chant. Recites. Yes, recites. Who says? Yeah, it'll come back to me. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, the eighteen. Huh? Read forty-four. Okay, read forty-four again, please. Joshua. Mm-hmm. And Raquel stole these images, which were her father's, in order that the man might, might not know to them where Yaakov had gone. Oh, so it tells them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it tells them. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Well, that's good because I was kind of thinking uh, that maybe she was being worshiping these things. But. Well, even today, Purim is a big thing in the so called Jewish neighborhood. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, Leviticus, um, yeah, Nathan, what, you want to know? Okay. Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verse um, 21. Leviticus, the 18th chapter, 21. Oh, let's get, um, if we can get more ready to read that for us, please. Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verse 21. Leviticus, the 18th chapter, verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. There's another one that we want to concentrate on. Neither shalt thou profane the name of Yahuwah thy Elohim. Right. We was into a whole lot of stuff. So we have the tower thing. We're going to get into Hannah. But you shall have brought out this is a place where um, they're actually a valley that they actually did a lot of um, human sacrificing. And so we're going to have to now also look at Molech. We're going to get Jagisha um, Moray if she can do Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Uh, Leviticus, the 20th chapter. If she can do verses 20. Leviticus, the 20th chapter, verse 20, 1 through 7. 1 through 7. Uh, excuse me. Leviticus, the 20th chapter. Verse 1 through 7. Verse 1 through 7. Yes, one second, make sure I have it here, okay? With you. Okay, whenever you appear ready. Okay, Leviticus 20 and verse 1. And the Elohim spoke unto Mo Moshe, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Yasharal, whosoever. Whosoever means whosoever. <laughs> okay, read on. He be of the children of Yasharal, mm -hmm. or of the strangers that sojourn in Yasharal, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. Wow. So we see what's happening here now. Um, we're going to talk about this whole thing with, um, because it was once said that, uh, well, giving up your children to Molech is not the same as an abortion. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, a big argument that's, that's going on now. And we're going to talk about that um, a, a little bit. But the scripture says that, uh, that anybody that was to participate in that practice of giving his son or daughter up to Molech, the person that actually got in, who was involved in this, even that mother and father should be put to death. The woman that did it, yeah, a life for a life. Firstborns are very, very important. We're gonna bring all of this out of scripture. And again, um, this is not a personal attack against anyone, nobody at all. I just wanna make sure that's crystal clear. It's just that I wanted to share some things about vows of commitments. And I, okay, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, so go ahead. Everything is going to be explained in, in the end. If there's any questions, please ask. All right, read on. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Mm -hmm. And I will set my face against that man mm -hmm. and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. And if, and if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, wow. he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man. So we see how serious this is? Offering up your, your children to Molech, and if you knew that I'd done that as I came, and you hid yourself from it, and you knew it, you also just brought death upon your own self, too. We must not profane the name of the Father that he gave to the nation of Yashua. That is a very, very serious crime, offering up your children to Molech. What would be Molech today? We're going we're gonna to show you. We're going to get into that. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah, I'm going to speed it up here a little bit because uh, we're about to do a few more minutes. We have to go for a break for a few minutes. We're going to stretch. So you go ahead, yes. Then so I will set okay. my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off. Not all, the family too. And all that go a whoring after him 
to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. Uh, verse 6, and the soul that turneth after such as, uh, as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am uh, the Elohim, uh, I am your, uh, Yehovah, your Elohim. All right, hallelujah. One more verse for me, please. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am Yahuwah, which sanctify you. Right, hallelujah. Um, we have Yahuwah, um, your Echad Deshim. Um, so we know the king of righteousness. And we talked about that before as being, we talk about something later then. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Uh, 1 Kings, the 11th chapter. If we can get Zabu to read that. What were uh Oh, excuse me, 1 Kings, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 7. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with uh, the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Am Amorites, I mean Ammonites, Edomites, uh, Zidonians, mm -hmm. Zidonians mm -hmm. and Hittites, uh, of the nations concerning uh, which the which the which uh, Yahuwah said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, mm. neither shall they come into you, for surely uh, they will turn away your heart after their uh, Elohim's. Uh, Solomon cleaved unto uh, these in love, mm -hmm. and he had seven hundred wives, princes. And three hundred uh, concubines, and princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon uh, was old, that his wives turned away his heart after their Elohim's, and mm -hmm. his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah, his Elohim, uh, as was the heart of Dawood, his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth. So we see, God's, right? So we see what's going on here uh, with, with these gods or Elohim's, and she is the goddess of anybody know? Sidonians. Yeah, but what is, what was she known for? Fertility. Hallelujah. Read on. For Solomon after uh, went after a shot shotter a shotter. Uh, the goddess of the uh, Zodinians, and after Melcom. Melcom, that's another one. So we're talking about that El Pior. Okay, and um, they say that's like the god of, or the mighty one of, of defecation, where um, when you look into that practice, is that um, the men and women have um, intercourse while they're um, yeah. waste. You know, it, it, there must be waste in you know um, around. So yes. wow. this is what Israel was involved in. Yeah. Malcolm, the uh, abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahuwah and went not fully after uh, Yahuwah as did Dawood his father. Then did Solomon build a high place. Uh, for Shemus, yeah, uh, he was involved the, in a whole lot of stuff. The yeah. abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moab, uh, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! How much time we have, um, Zaykay? Okay. Um, if we can, is it okay for you, you each out to read? Yeah. Oh, okay. If we can go to 2 Kings, um, Akoti, Catherine, 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter, 
verses 1 through 10, and then we'll stop and take a break. 2 Kings, um, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 10, and we'll take a break. We'll finish up. We're almost done. 2 Kings 23, verse 1. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the king went up into the house of the Kehor, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant. Which the, was book of the, what? the book of the law. You, you, you made a mistake there. The book of the law. The book of the law, the book of the covenant. So, yeah. I mean, I'm only messing with you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which was found in the house of Yahuwah. Uh -huh. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before Yahuwah to walk after Yahuwah mm -hmm. and to keep his commandments and mm -hmm. his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of their covenant that were written in the book. And all the people stood to the covenant. Right, so we just made this vow here, read on. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order, mm -hmm. and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of Yahuwah. Bring all out of the temple of Yahuwah. Uh -huh. All the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes them into the desert. And he put down the idolatrous priest. Okay, we're going to read this in the King James Version. And he burned the idolatrous priest. Okay, read on. Whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah. Hallelujah. So we're going to stop right there. Okay, you'll pick up verses 5 through 7 when we get back. 